We've got a big report with our top story today coming out in T-minus one hour at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. I stayed up late last night doing more research to confirm the pattern. And we've got two special video reports uh, that will also be in the article going up at Infowars.com. Obama establishing dictatorship. Now, I want to be clear here. The executive branch has been eroding the power of not just the states, but of the uh, legislative, that's the Congress, as well as the courts. But to a certain extent, the executive has teamed up with the courts in their war against the Bill of Rights, Constitution, and Declaration of Independence. And so this is a dictatorship of the bureaucracy and special interests that finance and control elected representatives. And they have been enshrining in the presidency what other oligarchies have done throughout history in every culture. Mesoamerican, Chinese, Japanese, African, Middle Eastern, Roman, Byzantine, before that, Greek, Persian. It goes on and on and on. That's why oligarchies like kings or dictators or strong men, Carol Quigley, Bill Clinton's mentor at Georgetown, head of political science, who wrote the thousand page book, Tragedy and Hope, only a thousand copies printed for the State Department and CIA, so that they could understand that the left right paradigm was uh, fraudulent. In fact, I meant to pull up this morning, we pull up Carol Quigley quote on how both parties are controlled. Uh, and and uh, to uh, get into the specifics of the quote, you know, he, he, he and, he, and the whole book's about this, that, that, that both parties should not oppose each other in reality, only on the surface. And so that there would only be degrees of differences within a very narrowly defined spectrum. And that over time, they would be able to transfer power completely into the executive. And that that was the plan of Wall Street controlling Big Pharma, Big Agra, uh, the Pentagon, through uh, global deals and globalism, worldwide standardization of policies to shut down all competition that is not part of the inside coterie of globalists. And you can see that happening today, of course. Because the, the, the book was government funded, uh, the plates got out. Uh, well, first, uh, one of the books was uh, uh, attained. Quigley later wrote books about it and admitted, yes, I wrote that for the government. Yes, I was allowed in to the private corporate annals that run the government. I believe world government is good. The public is too dumb to be free. Uh, we're doing a good thing for you. And he wrote public books like the Anglo-American Establishment uh, and others. Uh, but but this is a fact that this is how the world works. You can read the books written by Barry Goldwater where he publicly exposed uh, this corporate fascist, uh, corporatist system that's the opposite of free market uh, and what he called crony capitalism, which uh, listeners have pointed out and I agree with him, should be called crony collectivism or elite sponsored crony collectivism. Okay, now the big news today is that Obama is accelerating the process, and it's hidden in plain view, of the executive completely disregarding Congress. Ron Paul a month ago gave a speech titled, The Last Nail in the Republic's Coffin. And he said, if they're able to continue this war in Libya, then we were two plus months in, now we're three and a half months in, if they're able to continue this war in Libya, and uh, Congress has, 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 has filed lawsuits on Obama. They have said, you've got to come to us for authorization. We'll even give you authorization. We love war. We're totally corrupt. Remember, we launched all these other wars before you. We're bought and paid for by the same people. Just we want to maintain and, and be relevant. Or why will big defense contractors even finance our campaigns to be their slaves if you run everything? You know, we want some of the power here at the mafia table. And uh, Obama said, listen, I don't need you. Let me reissue a letter. I'm doing this for the credibility of the UN. That's a quote. I don't need to talk to you. I'll do whatever I want. <clears throat> that is what Caesar did when he began to take control of the Roman legions without senatorial authorization in the Roman Empire 2,000 plus years ago. That is what they did. What 2,000 
30, you know, 2,040 years ago. So that's what he did. That's taught in any mainline history. That's tyranny. That's tyrannous. Uh, you read about third world dictators in Latin America, Africa, Eastern Europe, Asia, who will get elected and then start dissolving uh, the power of the parliament. They keep the parliament or the Congress there. Uh, but, 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 but basically, anybody that doesn't go along with it ends up having dying in plane crashes or being arrested for corruption. Saddam Hussein did the same thing when the U.S. put him in as the head of the Ba'athist Party uh, in 1979. This is how it's all done. We've been through this thousands of, thousands of times throughout history. They found the Quigley quote. Please put it on screen. The argument that the two parties should represent opposed ideas and policies, one perhaps of the right and the other of the left, is a foolish idea, acceptable only to the doctrinaire or doctrinaire and academic thinkers. Instead, the two parties should be almost identical so that the American people can throw the rascals out at any election without leading to any profound or extensive shifts in policy. Source, Tragedy, and Hope, 1968. Written for the Department of State to be delivered to high-level CIA section chiefs so they could understand what they were doing. Over a thousand pages. I suggest you read it. And uh, what first in the early 70s one leaked, uh, patriotic groups got it, made a few thousand copies. Then later, plates were stolen. This is good patriots on the inside who don't want to be total slaves. You look at your children, you know, that'll wake you up to join the side of light and, and get you away from darkness. And now there's a whole bunch of publishers that put them out uh, because it, again, was government funded, so there's no real copyright. Plus, Quigley didn't want to make a stink out of it because that would then bring attention to it. This is a manual on how to enslave people and make them think they're free. Now, it's been bad since the killing of Kennedy with the executive grabbing power. And again, it's the bureaucracy. And if you look at all the major agencies, they're a revolving door of the former C uh, CEOs, presidents, top vice presidents, people the top 10 layers or more in every major Fortune 100 company. They rotate in and out of every federal agency, every federal bureaucracy. That's why the health care laws written by the insurance companies on record to rip everybody off. Uh, the carbon tax laws written by big oil to then shut down their competition. That's why uh, Big Agra openly writes the Food Safety Acts to where they're exempt from everything, but small farms are literally SWAT team for no reason, and you can't bake your neighbor a strawberry pie, literally. This is total bondage to shut you down. What do you expect these mega corporations to do? They're ruthless, they're hyper-competitive, they're non-free market. They want, what did the founder of the Rockefeller dynasty say? Competition is a sin. He wrote that in his own autobiography. Competition is a sin of the monopolist. We're fighting monopolist, monopolist. We're not fighting communist. We're not fighting socialist. We're fighting monopolist who we're, we've been falsely taught in school that fascism is the opposite of communism. No, it is true communism. And that's why, what, 10 years ago, the Chinese president, BBC headline, Chinese communism is the greatest expression of capitalism. And the article made fun of him. No, no, that was veritas. That was the essence of truth. Chinese communism, according to the model of capitalism that isn't free market that we have, because they interchange labels, this crony capitalism, this crony collectivism, Chinese communism is the greatest expression. The top generals, the top families, the million or so party officials of the billion and a half people in China, they own and run everything, and they are just billionaires wallowing in palaces while the people starve to death. That is communism. Under the Russians, communism, giant villas, racehorses, hundreds of mistresses, total gods in the inner party, in the Duma. Absolute rulers, total control working with Arm and Hammer, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, building all the big plants. That is, see, they tell you communism exists. They tell you the answer to the bankers, the answer to the robber barons, the answer to the corruption. It's everything you've been taught's a lie, folks. All the terms are scrambled. 
It's, it, it, it's all hiding there in plain view. You're taught you fight the bankers by getting a red flag and, 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 and going out and calling for communism. All the big billionaires right now calling for the carbon taxes when they have giant yachts and private trains and helicopters and dozens of palaces and homes, trillions of dollars in the aggregate that they control, hundreds and hundreds of billions in their war chest individually. Bill Gates is not the richest man, ladies and gentlemen. He's mid-level new, new nouveau riche brought into the fold because his dad was a top eugenicist and a top intelligence officer who they really appreciate his, 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 his human phobia. You got homophobia, human phobia, their hatred of humanity, their cold-bloodedness. The globalist and DARPA had to control all the new big computer companies. They couldn't have IBM own them all because of trust laws being semi-enforced at that time. So they created fake groups like Google, like Microsoft, like Yahoo, now all admitted as I told you over a decade ago. Now, totally admitted, government created all of it. Government run. But the profits are then shuttled to those key families. Now, so the essence of this is consolidation. And now, under Obama, it was like they were an SR-71 blackbird that was already going Mach 2 towards total executive power, the abolition of the Constitution, the separation of powers, the Congress being rendered servile, vestigial, ceremonial, a, 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 a archaic uh, vestige, uh, scrap of what it was. Now they have gone up to Mach 5 in the SR-71 Blackbird tyranny.